Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Fantasy for the Ages, the show where father and son sit down and talk about fantasy, science fiction, and whatever other nerdiness we feel like talking about. Today, I'm here, Jim, the father of this show, coming to you to talk about the best streaming services for SFF fans right now. If you enjoy this episode, be sure to like it down below. We hope you'll subscribe to our channel and be sure to give comments on what you think about my thoughts here in this episode. Also, check all the show notes on ways you can connect with us. We love to connect with our fans, and we appreciate those of you who support us on Patreon. As little as a dollar a month, you get some extra benefits, so check out our Patreon page too. That's down in the show notes. All right, the word is out, people. Geeks and nerds have inherited the world. Want proof? Look at how hard those streaming television services are working to grab the attention of fantasy, science fiction, and horror fans. Everyone is throwing crazy amounts of money at content that sometimes works, sometimes gets canceled, but it's all out there, and we have way more to watch than we can keep up with these days. It's fantastic. In this episode, I'm doing a service for you. I am ranking the top eight streaming services for science fiction and fantasy fans. See if you agree with me. This is as of August of 2023. Number eight, Hulu. There's not much on Hulu in this area. They do have the original The Handmaid's Tale. I haven't watched it, but I've heard great things about it. It's kind of associated here. So it's got that one, but that's really all. I mean, it streams things others have provided, but The Handmaid's Tale is really all Hulu's putting into this. So that's number eight. Number seven, Peacock. You know, NBC's premium service. I don't have a lot, but they do have a few shows out there. There's the reboot of Quantum Leap. It's really not a reboot. It's a sequel series. There's The Ark kind of a sci-fi show, and then Vampire Academy. That, I believe, has been canceled, but there's a few seasons on there that didn't happen very long ago. They've made an effort. Not a ton there, but they're beating Hulu. So that's number seven. Now we get into ones that are a little more robust, including number six, Paramount+. Plus. You know, this was CBS streaming, and now it's a little broader with Paramount+. Plus. They've got all the Star Trek stuff, including, you know, Star Trek Discovery, Picard, Star Trek Strange New Worlds, which is still going strong, Star Trek Lower Decks. So they've got all the Star Trek content. But there's also a Wolf Pack is an interesting kind of show there. And then Halo. They went in with the TV version based on the video games. And that's pretty decent. So Paramount Plus, they're a player, but only number six. Number five. Max. Now that used to be HBO Max. Now they're all cool and it's just Max. They really don't have a lot. They've got a lot of other people's movies and stuff on there, but what are they bringing to the game? I mean, of course they had Game of Thrones and that content's all still there. You can go back and watch. But more recently, of course, they have House of the Dragon, the prequel series. And that show kicks, man. That is awesome. Waiting for the next season to come out. And in development, this was just announced last month, the show that will be the rest of Jon Snow's story. From after Game of Thrones, season eight, Jon Snow walks north of the wall. What's up with that? They're making a series. And it's just, well, the working title now is Snow. And I want more Jon Snow. So that's cool. But that's in development. Writer strike, actor strike. Now, who knows where we'll go with that and when it might happen. But that's really all I've got to say for Max. Still, it's number five because House of the Dragon is excellent. So that by itself, that grabs your attention. Now, let's get to some real big boys. We've got number four, Netflix. And I actually struggled to rank the top four here as to which order they're so good. Netflix got The Witcher, The Sandman, Shadow and Bone. Wednesday, only one season, hoping there'll be another at some point. Manifest has just finished up. That was a quirky science fiction fantasy kind of show. Ah, quirky is the wrong word. Interesting, started at NBC, got picked up by Netflix, and thankfully they finished it. Love, Death, and Robots, an anthology short story collection. And then Lock and Key. A lot of different things on there that Netflix has brought to the screen. They're really playing here, and some of this 
big bucks in the production value. So well done, Netflix. Number four. Number three, Disney+. Plus. I mean, they got the whole Marvel collection, including a lot of just-for-TV content that they keep on bringing that weaves right in between all the big movies that go to the screen. And then there's the whole Star Wars catalog they've absorbed. You've got, again, all the movies that go out there, but then they're bringing all these episodes. Ah- Ahsoka is about to hit now. So much Star Wars. They've got other Disney things out there, but people talk about Marvel. They talk about Star Wars. And then there's one show, Parallels, a science fiction thing that's just got one season. It's expected to have another, but it's an original series they've put out there. It's actually pretty decent. So Disney Plus, keep it up. That's number three. Number two, Apple TV Plus. If you don't have Apple TV+, Plus, I hope you get it. They are doing some great stuff in this area. Really leaning a little bit more into the science fiction than anybody else. Silo was all the rave this year, and season two will be coming out eventually. C, another science fiction adaptation that's out there for us. Invasion. Foundation, new season just dropped. Excellent. And then For All Mankind. Man, they've got the science fiction coming at us, and it's high value. I mean, they're putting a lot of money into these shows. So Apple TV Plus, that gets you up there to number two. Nicely done. But number one, it's not even any contest these days. Prime Video. Holy cow, they are putting so much out now in this world. We've got The Wheel of Time, season two, just about to drop. The Rings of Power, of course. Good Omens, got another season of that out now. The Boys, can't wait for another season of that. The Peripheral, The Mayfair Witches, based on Anne Rice's books. Carnival Row, will we ever get more? Probably not, but what's out there is pretty great. Then they've got their add-on services that are right worked into Prime Video for just a little bit more money. So if you add on AMC+, Plus, you've got all the Walking Dead stuff. Fear of the Walking Dead is still ongoing. The Walking Dead Dead City is fairly new now, and there's still more to come. Not to mention all the horror content that's through their Shudder add-on subscription. That's like endless goodness. Wow. Prime Video, for the win, hands down. Again, let me know what you think of my rating here. Am I wrong? Do you agree? I want to hear it. Let me know. I'd also love to know which of these shows are particularly your faves. They may match up with mine. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll talk to you next time.